Stay safe online with private internet access. With unlimited data and a ton of encryption and authentication methods, PIA has your VPN needs covered. Check them out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video and today we're here setting up a basic Windows file server. Whether you want to share out some games throughout your house or you want to just share your media from your HTPC through to your desktop PC without running some weird extra program, today we're going to be going ahead and showing you exactly how to set one up. Now the process that we're going to be doing today is a very basic level file server. Sure, we're not forgetting about our security options and no, we're not forgetting to set up networking, however, if you are looking at more advanced administrative control over these things, you may want to hang out for a more advanced video. Today it's all about getting a folder from one computer to share to our other computer on a very basic level and bringing you along for this step by step guide on how to do exactly that. Now when it comes to setting up a Windows file server, it's actually able to be done on just about any version of Windows, really from XP onwards. Now don't get me wrong, XP can do file sharing, however it's ever so slightly different uh, than what we're doing here today. The exact steps that you can follow in this video will apply to Windows 10, 8.1 slash Windows 8 and also to Windows 7 as in Windows 7 it, the whole UI got a massive redesign and that's what we're going to be following this newly redesigned UI. Some things may be ever so slightly different in Windows 10 like checking an extra checkbox but I'll mention that when we do get to those steps. So really any version of Windows you have on your computer can act as a Windows server or if you just want to spend out the big bucks on Windows server you can go ahead and by that. Now, I'm sure there's also too going to be that few people, those few people in my comment section telling me to just use FreeNAS, use a Linux distro, use that and I would actually agree with them. Using a Linux OS as a file server may actually be a lot better as it's lighter on the computer, freeing up more resources and can also to be slightly easier to manage from remote network locations. However, there's a lot of people out there that just don't want to deal with Linux. They already have a Windows install and they just want to go down that road. So if that is something like you or you just happen to have a free Windows key, this is perfectly easy enough for you. Now this kind of a file setup has actually been used by me for a very long time. In fact, my first server setup was done in this exact way, just sharing a file across and also to sharing a folder across. So this is definitely a great way for a basic home server. And heck, if you're even setting up a small business, you could easily go down this road. But as I'll touch on in a moment, it's probably better to use a server OS if you are in the business side. Before we jump over to our PCs, it's important to have a couple things ready to go before we do jump into these steps. First and foremost, have a couple of computers. So you have your computer that's going to be acting as a server and then the other computer that's acting as a client. In our case today, both of them are running Windows 10 just to keep things up to date. But whatever you're using, whether it's Windows 10 on one, Windows 8 on the other, Windows 7 on one, Windows 10 on the other, doesn't matter, all cross compatible. And also to make sure you have a local network connection. Now, whether that's an ethernet cable, a wireless connection, as long as they're in the same physical location and on the same network. It's not going to work if you've got one on 4G and one in your local network and all needs to be on the same local network. Then finally, I'm going to make the assumption that you have some extra storage you want to share out. Whether you just want to share the C drive of the computer or you've got an extra drive that you've thrown in, external, internal, whatever, I'm going to make the assumption that you've got that ready to go. But we'll again touch on that when we jump over to our PC. And finally, if you want a more advanced guide into this kind of stuff, uh, do let me know down in that comment section as I've just finished a $10,000 Microsoft certification that has focused heavily on file sharing and also to server administration. So if you want me to kind of share that information for free, which is kind of a bad deal for me, but if you want to see or hear that information, uh, do let me know down in that comment sections and I'll look into doing a more advanced version of this. But today, we're keeping things simple. If I'm going too fast, use that little gear icon down there to slow down the video. And with that, let's jump over to our PCs. Alrighty, so we've gone ahead and jumped over to our PC here and this is all about basic file sharing. We're going to be setting up a basic file server on our computer right here. Now, as we did mention, you don't need anything fancy. So as you can see here, we've just got a standard installer Windows 10 with a 
bit of a different background, but I'm not running any special software. Everything we're going to be using is built into Windows 10 and 8 slash 8.1 and also to Windows 7. XP does obviously offer file sharing, although it's a little bit of a different uh, method because the menus were updated in Windows 7 and things are ever so slightly different. So this method will apply for 7, 8.1, 8 and also to today Windows 10 and not to mention the Windows Server based on these operating systems as well. Now our setup today is perfect as I did mention for home use and also to small businesses but for a business I'd still recommend a server operating system. Now before we get into the actual steps you need to take over on the left hand corner right here we do see that there is a little note that says server or when we get to the client we have the client. This is just to help you distinguish and also to change the background for the server so we've got like this running person whereas if we switched over to the um, the client computer or just any other computer it would be a different background so just keep that in mind uh, which computer we are on and with that being said that's about it now uh, let's go ahead and get started with the steps that we need to do now first things first we need to have a storage device so as I did mention we are over here on this server and I'll just pull up the PC file explorer and as we can see here I've inserted an X drive that I'm going to be using for a file server now I've just named a file server I'm going to make the assumption at this stage you have somewhere that you're going to share from whether that will be a C drive or an actual uh, separate drive totally up to you whatever you want to do so once we do have a drive that we're going to be going ahead and doing the first thing we want to configure is our network settings because if our network settings are constantly changing through a DHCP service where you get a new IP address just about every time you turn on your computer unless you've got different settings set up uh, it's going to be relatively hard to track down your server so the first thing I like to do is head down to the start menu and open up CMD and then once we jump in here we're going to do ARP if I spell it right, dash A, and this is just a simple ARP, address, uh, ARP command that will go ahead and show us what IP address we have and what else is on our network. Now if we jump over to our client PC right here and do the exact same thing, so we'll open up CMD and we'll do ARP, oops, ARP dash A. We can also to see we're on the same 192.168.0 network. Now, this is a dot two, and our server, I believe, was a dot eight. Now, if we jump back over the server, we can see also too, we're 192.168.0.8 network. So the 192.168.0 network is very important that both of them are on. Most people's houses, as we have right here, is a 192.168 network. Now, no, this is not actually my home network. Uh, this is just a temporary network that I set up and put some other devices on there so we can get an idea of what you may be seeing. But no, if you're trying to break into my network, this is not the addresses that we're actually using. So now that we've established that we're on the same network, we do need to set up a static IP address on our server. And this is very easily done. We're going to head down here and right click over on our uh, network settings right here and open up network settings. Now, if you have a Wi-Fi icon, same thing still applies here. We're going to scroll down a little bit and change our network and sharing center. We're going to click on that and that's going to pull us into the old interface. If you are running uh, Windows 7 and 8.1, you'll be just thrown straight into this interface here, whereas Windows 10 has one extra step because huh, Windows 10. Anyway, once we're in here, we're going to change adapter settings. We're going to go over to our Ethernet that we're using here. Again, if you are using, say, Wi-Fi or something similar like that, you may have some other adapters, but we want to use Internet or rather Ethernet. We're going to right-click and go over to Properties, and we're going to go and find our IPv4. 99.99% of home users these days are still using IPv4, although if you're watching quite a distance into the future, IPv6 is maybe what you're working on, but v4 is what we want here today, and as we can see in this window, it's getting everything automatically. Now, this is perfectly fine for any other system, but as this is a server, we do want to set it manually. So, we do need to remember that we're on a 192.168.0 network, and this is very, very important. Some houses might be 192.168.1.1 or 1.1 1 one network, some might be 10 or whatever, so do make sure that the first three uh, octets are exactly what you have here. Again, if you've forgotten, easy way to find out, go down, CMD, and we're going to do our ARP command again, ARP-A, and then we can pull that off to the side, and we want to use the first three numbers, or first three octets, and use that here. So, 192.168.0. Let's call this server uh, 110. Now, you do need to make sure that you use a number from 2 through to 254. Let's say, for example, we want to use 333. Three, three. It's not going to work because it's not between the specified value. Now, Windows says that you can use between 0 and 255, but 0 is you're uh, not exactly able to use that address. 1 is, generally speaking, an address that's reserved 
reserved for the router, and 255 is generally reserved for a broadcast address, or depending on how your network is set up, something else. So you don't want to use zero, you don't want to use one, and you don't want to use 255. So between two and 254 is a perfectly valid option. So again, we're going to use our number of 110. Really easy to remember. Subnet mask, that auto fills, so you don't need to worry at all. And the default gateway is your router's IP address. Now this is very easy to work out. You type the same 192.168.0 and for the most part this is going to be 1. However, if you're not exactly sure, you can easily go over to your CMD window again and hit in IP config uh, slash all. There we go. So once we do type it actually the right way around, one of those commands you just easily forget, we can see right here the default gateway of our network in our case is dot one. Now some countries and regions it will be dot 255 because they have slightly different network configurations, but today our default gateway is dot one. Now this is very crucial if we don't have this configured properly it's just not going to work. Now, in terms of DNS servers, if you still want to access the internet, you will need to type this in manually. However, if you have no desires to get onto the internet with this particular computer, you can just leave this completely blank. But we do want to get on the internet. So uh, for this particular case, I'm going to use the Google DNS servers, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 and then in our backup server address, it is 8.8.4. 4.4. Now the network settings can easily be skipped over in many situations when setting up a server, but we do want to do it kind of properly and having a static IP address so we always know where the server is, is very important. So once we do remember that, just keep in mind your 110 uh, address is your server and we're going to click OK and that basically applies our network configuration. We're going to go over here, we're going to push the up arrow a couple times to get back to our ARP command and as we can see right here, the computer has taken on this network address. And it's pretty much simple as that. Again, you can skip this step if you really want, but personally, I like to know where my servers are. 110 in this case is where our server is. We can close off the windows and we're basically done here with our network configurations. Next up, we need to create a user account. Now, just like the network configurations, users or accounts are really easy to skip over, but we're going to go ahead and type in user on our computer right here. And in Windows 10, it pops us into the stupid Windows 10 thing right here. And we're gonna go ahead and add someone else to this computer. Now again, if you're using 8.1 or Windows 7, it's gonna be slightly different looking to what we got right here, but basically you wanna set up another user. Now, if you are using Windows 10, we don't wanna set up another email account. We wanna sign in with uh, this guy and we'll just give it just a moment and add a user without a Microsoft account. Because we don't want to link an email address and all that kind of stuff, we're not going to worry about that. So we're going to call this count uh, server underscore access. And then we're going to go ahead and make a password of one, two, three, four. Don't tell anyone what the password is anyway. Uh, one, two, three, four. And because Windows 10 is ridiculous for setting up these kind of things, it's going to ask us some security questions. We're just going to give it some random answers because quite frankly, if we lose this account, it's not the end of the world. And uh, remembering one, two, three, four is a lot easier than these answers to the question, I guess. So we've gone ahead and set up ourselves a local account right here, which is going to be our access account. Now you may be thinking, why do we need user accounts? I want to share files, not make user accounts. Well, when we share our files, we need to actually assign permissions to those files. And we'll touch on this in just a moment. If you don't have user accounts, you can't assign permissions. Now, for example, if you've got multiple different people in your house that you want to segment off your file server to, you can create multiple accounts. So for example, you could create a mum, a dad account, and a kid's account. You could create uh, your brother or your sister's account. You could create multiple different accounts and give them access to different parts of the server. But for today, we just want everyone to log in with the same account. So we'll just create the single server access account. Again, generally speaking, you want to have one account account per person who's going to be logging in. Doesn't affect performance, just affects the way that you do manage it. So now that we've got our account set up right there, we can finish off here and actually get into the file sharing. So we're going to go head back over to the this PC or my computer, whatever you want to call them. And we're going to go over to the drive we want to share from. Now, if you're just sharing from the desktop, you can go to desktop. Honestly, it doesn't matter. We're going to go here and we're going to make ourselves a new folder and call this one server. 
uh, let's call this one server underscore main, just to keep things easy to remember. Once we do this, we're gonna right click on server main and hit properties, and then we can go over to the sharing settings. Now, depending on what you wanna do, you can go down to the advanced route, and that is perfectly fine. We set up everything you need to set up already to go through the advanced wizard, but today we're gonna keep things easy and just click on the share button right here. Now, as we can see here, the file automatically shares with the owner of the system. In this case, we have the CPU modder, VM that's sitting inside of my current main server because I'm not gonna let you guys see into my server. So that's the first account that's right here, but we do wanna share it with that account we just made. Now, if you've only got a few different accounts, you can actually click on this little drop down, and we can actually see the accounts that we've got right here. We'll click add, and then we'll make sure we have read and write. Now at this stage, a lot of people just go ahead and select everyone, click add, and then go read and write. Now this is actually the world's worst way to do it because that means anyone who jumps onto your network can just access your server. Doing it this way means only people who log in with the server access account with the username and password can access your files. This is just something that as a security person is absolutely important. So no one can just accidentally get on your server and start using the system. Again, if you do want to get more specific, you can go ahead through the advanced menu, but again, we're setting up a basic menu right here. We're going to click share right here, and then we will be prompted with this menu. If you don't get prompted with this menu, don't worry, but if you do, we'll make sure that yes, turn network discovery on and that will let people discover the computer. As we can see right here, boom, here is our network path. We need to type this address into our computers to go ahead and access it. And as we can see right here, computer name followed by the path. Really, really easy. Now, before we click done, we're actually gonna jump over to the client PC, take note of this and start joining our network. So we've gone ahead and jumped over here to our desktop PC. So this is our client system or your gaming PC or your laptop, your desktop, whatever that isn't the actual host, we'll click on File Explorer and then this is a really easy task. We're just gonna click on Computer and then we're gonna go ahead and map a network drive. Once we've done that, we can type in that uh, line that we got from our other computer. Once we've typed in the path, we'll make sure we have reconnect at sign in. And in our case, we're going to connect using different credentials because again, we're not using the local account of this computer to log into the server. We're going to be using that account we just created moments ago. We'll click finish and then we'll be prompted by this pop-up. Again, what we do want to remember is we need to log in with that account we created over here on the server. So in our case, we created server underscore access and our password again was one, two, three, and four. We can click on the little view button to check and we'll make sure we click remember my credentials. We'll click okay and give it just a moment. And boom, we are straight in here. The computer comes up in our network locations and we get a little storage bar. And to prove that this works, we'll right click on here. We'll create ourselves a new folder. We'll call this one test main. There we go, and we'll jump back over to our server. And back on our server, as we can see right here, we have our file server, we have that uh, shared folder, and then boom, there is test main. And this will be working exactly the same in real time across all the different computers, and that's basically it. It's extremely simple, and what we've set up here is enough security that anyone that walks into your place won't just jump straight onto your server. If this does stop connecting for some reason, there are a few workarounds, you can restart the system to get this to reconnect. You you can generally speaking right click and reconnect in this case we've got disconnect so there's a lot of different things you can go ahead and do and have a bit of a play around but that, in a basic nutshell, is how to set up a simple and basic file server. So there we go, a really simple guide, just simply sharing our files across without forgetting our network configurations and also to making sure that we have a user account set up so that anyone can't just jump over into our network and start using our systems. This is a very basic way to go ahead and share files. It's also too got a little bit of security built in, again, so you're not really exposing your files to anyone. That being said, there are a lot more control you can do with advanced setups. You can actually set our basic file permissions per file. So if you create a folder like we did and actually set files, there's a ton of extra stuff you can actually do with this kind of setup. But hey, now that you've got this going, you can share your media, you can share your photos, you can share your basically everything at this point, it is really up to you. So guys, with that being said, let me know down in that comment section if you do have any questions, I'll do my best to help you out. Now that I've got a Microsoft certification, I guess I have to help you out. Either way, guys, uh, do let me know down there. If you wanna pick up some of the parts like the hard drive that we did talk about or anything like that, find them in that description box. Thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.